We'll conclude chapter two with the discussion of contraction. Now here, we have uh, the line element squared, the differential line element squared given by the GIJs and the differentials. Now, this is an invariant quantity. This is like the length, say, of a, a, a distance between two points, and that's going to be invariant. It doesn't matter what coordinates that you choose to do that. So that is considered an invariant, and here I'm going to generalize this concept where I replace the dx's with the uh, contravariant vectors, and this will also be invariant. Here, the a squared can be thought of as a sub i summed with a super i. The gij, what it has done there, it has lowered the index of one of the contravariant vectors, the a super j, to bring it to an a sub i. And that formula that we used, which is given here, gives us a formula with no g's. G's have been, have been basically gone because of the lowering situation. Notice that this is a dot product. This is the uh, good old-fashioned dot product you encounter in your physics class. The a vector dot a vector is simply given by summing components. Now here we're being careful to say that the components are one covariant with a contravariant counterpart. Now the reason why this is not a problem in your physics class is because in Cartesian uh, coordinates the gij's is simply delta ij. The gij's are ones along the diagonal and zero everywhere else. So therefore, when you lower uh, the contravariant vector in the Cartesian case, the a sub i with the delta ij here is simply going to give you a super i. In other words, you find there's no difference. The covariant and the contravariant components, they're the same. They're the same. So this is a lowering of the index, but with the uh, delta being in there, it's going to show you that they're the same. It doesn't matter. So in your basic physics class, when you did a dot a, the vectors, you didn't worry about superscripts and subscripts. You simply said it's a sub 1, a sub 1 multiplied, or a sub x, a sub x, and then a sub y, a sub y, and a sub z, a sub z. So you simply did not worry about the difference of a superscript and a subscript as regard indices. Here we now know a little bit more and need to be careful in general that the true dot product here is given by uh, the covariant component hitting with the contravariant component and summing them up or using the metric, the metric tensor here as the the way to do the calculation. All right, well, here's a homework problem for you. I want you to show that you can construct here the contravariant tensor of rank two by using two covariant vectors. These are tensors of rank one, co contravariant, excuse me, uh, two contravariant uh, vectors, which would be two contravariant tensors of rank one and by putting them together you get a contravariant tensor of rank two. So do that and then show uh, that you can do this arrangement where you actually do a lowering of one of the indis indexes here. So I'm going to lower here the i to the k, see similar idea as we did earlier and then if you sum over that you have an invariant. I would like you to show that. So uh, this very, very important assignment gives you some uh, knowledge of uh, raising and lowering, additional knowledge of raising and lowering, and, and contraction. This is called contraction when you do this. You make a, an index that's uh, contravariant and covariant, make them the same, and you contract. So always pair a covariant with a contravariant one for contraction. And you must pair up all the indices so that you are left with a scalar if you have uh, like tensors of rank five uh, or six or seven. This will only work when you have 
an even number, the rank is even, and you have the same number of lower as the same number as, as upper, you can then contract. If you don't, you can construct one using GIJs. But here, for example, if I wanted to contract this into a scalar, I would say the I and N become the same, and the J and the M become the same. So the first pair and the second pair. So then you get TIJ, and, and this is IJ, and then they sum up and you get a scalar. If you did it this way, where you tried to make the top ones pair up, that would not be a scalar. That, that would not work. You need to pair a, a covariant with a contravariant. Well, that's some advanced tensor stuff we'll end with. And as a personal note, when I was uh, studying in college, the vector uh, book by Shams, Vector Analysis, the last chapter was on tensors. And I wished and wished it'd be a book on tensors back in the 1970s, early 1970s. Well, that book finally did get written, and it was written by Dr. K, David K. Uh, and this Dr. David K, K A Y, uh, he became chair of mathematics at my school when I was chair of physics, and I got to meet him. It was very cool to meet the author of Shalm's Outlines tensor analysis or tensor calculus book. I had been introduced uh, by tensors as an undergraduate and there was a family doctor also by the name of K but that was K-A-I-G-H and uh, both uh, of the K's uh, were great to know. See you in the next chapter.